and um, I'd like to now introduce uh, Professor Ian Truman. Um, so, Ian uh, Plant Ecology and Plant Diversity at the University of Wolverhampton for 35 years. He has been joint author of the Ecological Floor of the Shropshire Region, so there's another one, um, The Floor of Montgomery and The Floor of Birmingham and the Black Country. And Ian still enjoys um, field recording now, I think, Ian. So you're going to talk to us about recording the urban floor, Ian. Um, well, this is mainly about recording the urban floor of Birmingham and the Black Country. Um, and uh, I've included the Biological Record Centre for Birmingham Black Country on the first slide because they crunched our data for us, they produced the map, so an awful lot of the clever stuff was done by them. Uh, all we had to do was to go out in the field and record. And recording in the urban areas is just as much of joy as it is recording in the countryside, in my opinion. Um, having recorded practically every year since 1975, I think, um, I still love it. And uh, this is, here's Mike Poulton in a, a steel spoil tip, which is very much like a calcareous grassland, uh, enjoying the diversity. Um, if you're recording ones and twos, and Mike and I did a lot, awful lot of the recording in Birmingham Black Country together, uh, you can almost do it ad hoc. But if you work with groups, uh, I mean, there are lots of advantages. Uh, it's, it's a teaching and learning experience. And um, we all miss things. We all got our blind spots. So it's very useful to have more people there. But if you've got a group, you've really got to have some insurance somewhere, I think. And that probably means you're going to have to do, uh, in preparation for that, you've got, you've got to have a, a risk assessment, which is very boring, but it's got to be done. Um, what about work, work, the urban area? Uh, there are more people in the urban area. I don't find them any worse than rural people on the whole. <laughs> um, there are one or two useful tips, such as uh, not shouting at anybody uh, unless you're well out of reach. And also, um, uh, if there is an area which is rather notorious, record it in the morning because most of, these, most of the notorious people don't get up till lunchtime, which is quite useful. Um, it's always useful to have uh, a person to watch that nobody walks into the roads because there are a lot of roads in the urban areas and people who are recording just forget what they're doing. So you need somebody who has the boring job of stopping people killing themselves, which is quite useful. High-vis jackets are quite useful, but they're a bit of a mixed blessing uh, from a distance. They might think you're a load of policemen, which might not necessarily go down very well with some people. Um, strangely, just like the Fens, Birmingham, the black country, is in more than one uh, vice county. Um, half of Birmingham black country is Birmingham itself. The other half is a black country, Wolverhampton, Walsall, Dudley, Sanwell. Uh, and these are all fiercely independent areas, but in fact, it is one con conurbation. And it's covered by three vice counties. So the first thing you have to do is to get the vice county recorders online. And just as Owen found in the Fens, they're very grateful to have somebody to do the urban area usually. Um, so that has been uh, quite an advantage, but you, you do need to actually work on um, transferring data from the vice county people to you and from you to the vice county people to keep the thing uh, going. The urban area is quite complicated. This is less than a one kilometre square that you can see here. And you've got um, roads, obviously, you've got railways, you've got dead railways, you've got canals, uh, you've got urban uh, landscape, you've got uh, post-urban landscape, post-industrial landscape, you've got um, residential areas. Uh, it, it's hopeless to try and record on a, a scale more than a one kilometre square, in my opinion. In fact, in recent years, we've been recording on a quarter kilometre square, 
uh, which is perfectly possible to do with GPS, although you do need to have somebody to keep an eye on the GPS more or less all the time. And an awful lot of this landscape is privately owned and fiercely privately owned. So, um, you know, quite a few sites you would need to get permission to get into. Um, but always remember that the idea is to sample it, sample the area rather than try and cover every last square inch. So um, look at the area beforehand with things like Google Earth and then um, sample it as best you can. One of the biggest tragedies are the railways, of course, because it's very difficult to get onto the railways now. We try to get access to a small bit of railway track uh, goods railway track, and they wanted us to pay them £3,000, which is more money than we had to spend on the whole floor, so we didn't do it. Um, so you have to record places like the railways from behind the fences and from railway stations and to some extent from moving trains. Uh, and the same thing applies with motorways. You can't get access to motorways either, so there are gaps in what you can do and what you can't do. People often look down on the urban area, but there are areas of track countryside uh, in the urban areas, which is just as good as the countryside. In fact, in some ways they're better because they've escaped uh, modern agricultural intensification and so on. This is Sutton Park, uh, which is completely surrounded by Birmingham and, and Sutton Coalfield. Um, and it's a medieval deer park, thousand hectares, uh, a National Nature Reserve, an SSSI, ancient woodlands, heathlands, grasslands, and wonderful wetlands, which I think Owen would recognize some of the species that we get in our, uh, our wetlands. <clears throat> I've just put three up there. Very, very scarce anywhere else in the Midlands. Um, I put Kerrix diandra up there. We, we, there are 26 sedges in Sutton Park. Now, these... Um, these track countryside sites are, are usually scheduled in one way or another. Um, the lesser ones are uh, local wildlife sites, and there will be records for them. Um, you need to know where they are when you're recording, but you'll probably need to record them again because it is a rule that all wildlife sites are in more than one kilometre square. So the records, the existing records are often not really useful if you're recording on a one kilometer square basis. Um, then there are the waterways. We are on the um, uh, watershed in Birmingham, the Black Country, so our rivers are not very big and have been used as rubbish dumps for 300 years, so they're not very exciting, although they are improving. The canals, on the other hand, are very, very interesting. Um, the only internationally protected plant in Birmingham Black Country is Luronium natans, and that grows in the canals. It was known from one little bit of canal, and it turned out to be much more widespread in the canals of Walsall in the north of the county. Um, then we have the post-industrial sites. This is a blast furnace and uh, blast furnace sand, a furnace sand uh, spoil tip in. Uh, in, in the center of the conurbation, uh, probably mostly 19th century, but has not colonized very much. And this is what makes these sort of sites interesting. They are very difficult to colonize because they, they are quite toxic often, um, very sharply drained in some cases. And um, therefore you tend to get them colonized by interesting rather than common species. Uh, this particular site uh, is very, very dry and has a lot of winter annuals such as common cudweed and little mouse ear and, and stress tolerators like bee orchids and uh, blue fleabane and so on and so forth. So that's one site. This is a site in, in Shropshire, not in, in, in uh, Birmingham Black Country. This is in Telford in Shropshire and it's an open cast coal mine which was abandoned in the 1950s. Now you don't get these anymore because it's illegal to leave them like this, but they left this one like this. It's not pretty, admittedly, but it has developed a quite an interesting flora. Uh, there are clay spoil areas 
covered in common and, and sudden marsh orchid and there are no less than three club bosses on there. Um, Stag's horn club mosses, rare in Shropshire. Um, fir club mosses, very rare in Shropshire. An alpine club moss, uh, well, the last time that had been seen in Shropshire was in 1726. How they got onto this spoil tip in, 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 in Telford, I do not know. Maybe it was migrating birds. Um, even the most disgusting sites can be have interest in species. Uh, gas works uh, where they made gas out of coal and it was again abandoned in the 1960s and when we explored it in the 1990s it still stank to high heaven uh, with gas and it had a thin uh, scrub of um, birch and, uh, and uh, wi willows and underneath it an enormous population of yellow birds nests the only one we knew of in, in the in, in the Birmingham Black Country at the time. <clears throat> this site has now been developed. It's now covered in houses. And this is one of the tragedy about these post-industrial sites is that they're quite often privately owned, so they're not very well known. Um, we get into some of them through holes made by vandals. Um, and they, um, they're not characteristic in, in the way that countryside habitats are and they're often not protected and they just disappear, which is tragedy, really. Um, however, you will spend a lot of your time in the urban area recording in much more mundane habitats. And this is really the objective of the exercise is to get some sort of a matrix of what are the common species in the conurbation against which to assess individual species. Um, Gardens are important. 28%, I'm told, of Birmingham Black Country <clears throat> consists of gardens. And uh, front gardens you can do. You have to do them from the right side of the, the re retaining wall. Uh, people will come out and accost you if you go, walk into their garden. If it's really interesting, then knock at the door and ask. Back gardens, we don't know so well. Back gardens are one of the mysteries of Birmingham Black Country and most urban areas too, I think, it's pity in a way. But even lawns can be quite interesting. This is a, a lawn in Dudley, um, and the little white dots in there are actually pale blue. It's Pratia pedunculata, which is an Australian species, which the owner of the house said has been there for at least 20 years. You've no idea how it got there, and it, 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 it is present in a few lawns. So you've got to look everywhere, really. Uh, one area you must look at are, are allotments. Um, allotments are refugia, really, for arable weeds. Um, and um, a very nice places to visit, too. You, we, 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 they're quite difficult to get into um, because they're well protected by the allotmenters. Um, but if you go through the allotment offices for them, from the local authorities, you can get to the secretaries and they will meet you there and show you around and uh, you probably leave not only with a good list of arable weeds but also with some very nice vegetables as well. Um, um, Stachys arvensis which is nationally near threatened uh, we hardly had any records for in the conurbation but when we got into the allotments we found that it was present in something like a third of all allotments so that's where it is um and then there is the what you might call the the concrete jungle um walls uh, are very good for ferns just as they are in in in, in the fens but the bottoms of walls are a good place to look for species this is a place which doesn't get trampled on so much gathers a little bit of soil and quite often doesn't get herbicided either and you get quite interesting species rich little bits of vegetation along the bottoms of walls like this i'll put the names of some of the species there um polypogon viridis is water so-called water men uh, appeared in this sort of habitat while we were recording and is, is spreading widely in the conurbation now and it's quite a common plant 
in this habitat in Birmingham Black Country now, which it wasn't at the beginning. Um, this is another one. This is deadly nightshade, which is uh, not uncommon at the foot of walls in Dudley. Um, it's been known for a long time on Dudley Castle, and presumably the birds spread it around, around uh, Dudley uh, in their droppings. But if you want to uh, murder somebody, go to Dudley and you'll be able to collect some deadly nightshade with no, not too much difficulty. Um, this is spotted medic, which is a plant which is native in South East England, uh, but has a center of center in, in the Mediterranean and it's spread north and west is supposed to be about climate change. And it's certainly spreading north and west into uh, Birmingham, the black country and its habitat that it favors is uh, roadside verges. Uh, where it's probably spread, uh, its huge seeds are probably spread by the mowing machines. Uh, then we have the uh, invasive aliens. Uh, this is a canal, uh, and this is hydrocotyledon ranunculoides floating pennywort. And this is what it does. It's been doing it in Walsall, and it's been doing it in Dudley, and um, it can cover a canal in, in a month at the right time of the year. It grows very fast. It doesn't like the winters and will generally be wiped out, but it lurks and is there ready to come back in, in many sorts of situations. Sometimes disappears. Um, the ketoniasters are also plants which are starting to look like a bit of a problem in the urban area. Um, this is, this is our distribution map of all Catoniasters. We did identify quite a lot of them, I, I hasten to add. Um, in the 1971 floors of Staffordshire and, and Warwickshire, there were practically no, in fact, there were any mentioned in Staffordshire Catoniasters. I mean, they did turn their noses up at this sort of plant to some extent in the 1970s, but even so, they've spread very, very widely and are slightly worrying, I think. Um, the result of all this was, was a flora, um, weighs 2.4 kilograms. Um, uh, it has introductory chapters, uh, but the most important thing in my opinion was, was just as with the Fenland data is the analysis. Um, so many county floras have very little analysis of the, of the data which seems a terrible waste of data to me. Um, it's quite a, quite a lot of information. Um, even simple analyses such as coincidence mapping, uh, I've got a lot to say. This is a coincidence map of 48 species associated with canals, aquatics and, and marginals. And uh, we chose the species and we've superimposed the 48 species. I mean, DMAP show, allows you to, to do coincidence mapping. And uh, we've also shaded all the squares that have canals in. And you can see very clearly that the canals of Walsall are the richest and the canals of Birmingham are the poorest. And this is useful information. This is a a uh, coincidence map of 200 species of the so-called axiophytes. These are species which are uncommon, less than 25% of uh, the, the uh, monads contain them in, in, in our particular example. And um, then we select all the ones that we consider, we consider to be of nature conservation interest. And these are 200 of them uh, mapped in Birmingham, black country. And you can see very clearly that there is a sort of a, a wasteland between Wolverhampton in the northwest and central Birmingham in the northeast. And most of the biodiversity is uh, north and south of this. Um, some people don't like the idea of actually fights because it's it, it considered to be subjective. But uh, this is uh, another one of uh, Mike, uh, Mark Hill's uh, uh, analyses methods, a much earlier one than the one that uh, was, was, was used by, uh, by Owen, uh, but then I'm very much out of date. And uh, so we, we analyze, we 
did a multivariate analysis of all the all the uh, monads in relation to the species they contain and without going into any details it's divided off it's cut off a group of 129 monads there and there's a list of species there which are characteristic of these and much much less common in the, in the other uh, monads and you can see they're not very exciting species but they're all species which you, you would probably associate with semi-natural habitats hard rush water mint wild angelica crested dog's tail branch burry cluster dock uh, duck common duckweed um, and these monads are much more species rich than the other the average is 233 species it's 180 species in the other mon uh, monads. So we call this the uh, rich semi-natural group of modules. The rest has divided, been divided again, and it cuts off a small group there, which has got three species, wormwood, yellow toad flax, and weld characterizing, which are associated in, in the conurbation with uh, post-industrial sites and um, three species in Anthic Rocata, um, water drop, water hemlock, uh, gypsy wort and water, water dock, which you would associate with um, uh, canals. There are plenty of canal mod, uh, uh, species in group one, incidentally, but uh, the canals and the industrial, post-industrial sites are obviously in the industrial areas of the, uh, of, of the conurbation. So we call this the industrial group. GM urbanum, although it's wood avens, is a, a, a pernicious weed in Birmingham, the Black Country, and is very much more associated with gardens uh, and uh, a suburban sort of habitat. If you put these on a map, you again you get a very interesting picture of the conurbation, and you can see this central core of the industrial much more spread out in, in, in the black country where you have lots of little towns rather than Birmingham, which is a very much a single center. Um, and then you've got the, the background matrix, which, which is the, the suburban squares. And the rich semi-natural is very much like the, the, uh, um, the axiophyte uh, map. It, it, in detail, which, which gives you some comfort that the axiom fight map is saying something uh, worth saying. Um, the Wildlife Trust has, has, has found <coughs> this sort of data very useful in the modern age when we're starting to look at uh, conserva nature conservation at, at the landscape level, uh, following John, John Lawton's publication in 2010, where he said that we can't conserve nature in just in the core areas. We've got to think of the linking areas and uh, and such like as well. And this is uh, one of the maps that they produced in the early days to show where the core areas are of uh, in, in Birmingham, the Black Country, and where the, the potential linking areas are. And of course, you've got a different you've got a different approach to nature conservation in the different sorts of areas. And uh, Owen. That's the um, end, as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Are you getting are. near the end? Okay, I just wanted to make sure there was time for questions. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you very much. That's Birmingham Black Country. Last week. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. That's, that's preparing the ground, it looks to me, for some very interesting um, plant colonisation. Uh, some very interesting photographs and some very interesting plant assemblages revealed there. Thank you very much for that. Um, Ian. Um, right, we've got five minutes for some questions. Um, I, I, I'm I'm going to uh, ask a, a quick question of you. I think you were hinting that you were looking inside the garden wall on occasions. That's something that we tend not to do in. Or, or generally we're guided not to do in, in BSBI. Is, is, that, is that what you do? Do you look inside garden walls? You've got to. I mean, in the, as I say, in the urban areas, you would miss so much if you didn't do it. Uh, we do it from the outside mostly. And sometimes the owners come out and apologize for the state of their gardens. <laughs> Just occasionally you get rude signs out of the window. 
Um, but if it's at all, if it's really interesting, you you really got to ask permission. You've got to knock on the door and ask. I mean, we you you can't you can't ignore gardens uh, um, because they're such a, a big part of, of where plants have got to grow. I you mean, don't we find were it difficult. Earlier on about herbicides, herbicide use in 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 the conurbation is just as annoying as it is in the countryside but in some ways it it gives you the annual floor that you wouldn't actually have if they didn't do it so there we are okay okay jim have you got a question there yes uh, just to follow on from that one presumably you're only recording naturally occurring species in those gardens you're, you're not recording any any of the planted species of course, of course, yes, yes. yes. I mean, uh, you record, you record, you record alien species when they're not in yarns. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, my first question is from Victoria Burton, uh, and uh, she asks, uh, "Do you use binoculars useful for really botanizing?" And uh, actually, I wonder if you use binoculars for botanizing along. Uh, motorway edges and, and indeed yes. gardens as well. Well, um, I, d I, d I don't. Uh, I, the, the difficulty with binoculars is it's bad enough wandering around an urban area with a notebook. <laughs> I think you've got binoculars as well. You are going to arouse suspicion. Yeah. I mean, um, so if you've, got, if you've got a group of people, then you can have one person with binoculars to, uh, yeah. Maybe yes. I mean, they are <laughs> useful. I mean, uh, to be honest, uh, close focusing binoculars are absolute godsend uh, in, in in a lot lot of situations in the countryside as well. I should imagine. Yes, but, I, I can see. I can see it might be problematic. You don't want to get arrested <laughs> wandering well, around the urban areas with yeah, binoculars. <laughs> my experience of life is it doesn't matter what you're doing. You there's got there's always psychology involved in it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I've got a question from Monica Frisk. In Cambridge, we found Breckelin species being introduced with builder's sand. Have you found anything similar? That species being uh, introduced into the urban area from outside that you can you can identify? Uh, yes, um, I, I think so. I mean, the, the difficulty is you can be absolutely can't be absolutely sure about anything, but certainly. Um, uh yes again some winter annuals um i've seen introducing situations which look suspiciously to me like they're coming in with builders side. but this is all part of what's happening you know i mean you, you can't again it's not something you can't just sort of cross it out and say it doesn't count um uh, yeah, yeah. the other thing that's happening in the urban area is habitat creation i mean i'm involved in habitat creation so as bad as the rest of them but people gaily spread rare um, grassland species all over the place, uh, which can be very annoying sometimes. I mean, uh, it, it's, they pop up and they can quite often persist for several years. Mm. And uh, you want to accept this is what's going on. You know, this is, this is how the, the, uh, the places are yeah. developing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's part of the response of people to their urban environment. Mm. Uh, another question, Jim? Uh, yeah, uh, Rodney Burton asks, uh, did I miss any mention of cemeteries? Do, do you record cemeteries? Oh, yes. Sure. Yes, yes. I'm sorry. I, I, I couldn't mention everything. Yes. Uh, cemeteries are wonderful, especially old cemeteries. Although, strangely enough, the very oldest cemeteries are often so deeply colonized by trees there's not an awful lot there but uh, but yes yeah oh yes we we love a good cemetery um and uh, i sp spent quite a bit of time recording cemeteries the, the the nice thing about cemeteries is that uh they're quite used to people wandering about so it doesn't erase ar arouse any interest in. but i can think of one or two centuries in cemeteries in Dudley, which are absolutely splendid in terms of biodiversity. Great, thank you. Okay, I've got there's a comment here rather than a question, which was is from Owen, I think. Yeah, um, Owen was part of an ITE 
NCC theory of active, active railways in the 1976 to 83. It showed how important railways were at the time, and it would be wonderful for National Rail to allow botanists back onto the banks. Our team were all trained as railway lookouts and were thus able to work as fine. Well, <laughs> I think it's time for another another survey, actually. Yeah. Uh, well, I have an idea that there have been uh, people appointed to undertake surveys for on, on the, on the yeah, rail there, network. Yeah, there have been, there have been, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and of course, there are always uh, extinct railway lines, which are wonderful as well. Yes. Um, yeah. um, Ian, thank you very much for that. That, that was um, a wonderful talk, and it is an uh, urban botany is definitely something that we're talking about and trying to encourage in other places. So it's great to see people on the path already and pick up some tips from how you go about it.